My name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my floss tube channel. Today is Sunday, October the 17th and it is a mostly sunny day, although at this particular moment there is a little bit of cloud and so between the cloud and the sun being behind a tree, which is giving me this lighting, which is not bad. So I'm actually going to try and get this uh, all filmed and accomplished before everything moves on me and all of the lighting changes. We have those weird ones. Anyway, you've all seen the weird episodes. This is a channel about cross stitching and the stitching that I've done this week. So if you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back because uh, you really do know what you're in for. Uh, just wanted to take a couple of minutes up here. Um, that's, I've brought, that's not the right note. This is the right note. There we go. Uh, about the comments from last week. So thank you so much for those of you who wished me a, a Thanksgiving regardless of your location. So for those of you that are over in Europe who don't necessarily celebrate Thanksgiving, those of you in the US who celebrate Thanksgiving at a different time. So I appreciated all of those comments. Uh, yes, I and my family had a very nice Thanksgiving dinner. Very, very small. Um, my mother tends to enjoy having a lot of people for Thanksgiving, and so for the past two years, um, it's been a very, very quiet Thanksgiving with the restrictions where we are. Uh, so uh, certainly the extended family uh, has not been able to attend because it's too many people, and so it was a very quiet Thanksgiving. So. Um, but we, we had Thanksgiving. Um, it could be very reminiscent of what our Christmas Day potentially is going to look like. So anyway, we, we, go with, uh, we go with what the requirements are and you just make do with what you've got. Um, but thank you to all of you who, who sort of celebrated Thanksgiving with us Canadians uh, uh, last weekend. Okay. Uh, all of the other questions, comments, I'm going to deal with as we talk about those particular items. There are several of them and you're going to laugh when you see how much stitching I got done this week. Okay, let's start with the ever infamous Stitching Tree by the Stitching Mummy on Etsy. And here's where I am as of this week. Yeah, that's right. I'm exactly where I was last week. So no stitching on this this week. Here's why. None of my LNSs had this this thread in stock. And I I mean, don't get me wrong, I could probably count over and start on the leaves, but I really do like when the branch is there and then I can just put the leaves around it cuz I feel better about that. Again, so that's just how I like to stitch. Anyway, so no stitching on this this week, and I have to tell you, I absolutely felt it. So depending on when my LNSs are expecting to get their floss in, I'm seriously debating starting another project. Just because I really missed not having something else to do. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, I'm not sure I like only having one project on the go. Which I know that's an interesting statement coming from me, and it will, you know, maybe be reflected in plans for 2022, and I'll talk about that too. But anyway, so nothing got accomplished on this. Couldn't find the things. Um, so this is into a little bit of the stash positions. So I'm actually quite worried now about being able to match this. So my fallback position. So what I did go out and do is I went out and graciously bought a whole bunch of brown anchor floss. So I had already looked at DMC because we all know I've got a DMC color chart. I had a couple of options. I wasn't really happy with either one of them. I didn't feel like that they were close enough. So I went out and got a bunch of anchor. Now I got a bunch of anchor because I wasn't smart enough to, you know, on the day that I was doing this to have the project with me, you know, so true to form. So. I bought a bunch of anchor, of course, came home and went, clearly some of them are wrong. Um, but I do think that there is one in here uh, that is my fallback position. So at least I'm feeling better now. 
saying, I think I do have a fallback position. And this is anchor 1088, which I think is what is what I'm going to go with if if the next. Um, so what I was using for this was Classic Colorworks Cocoa Bean. Now, the version that I have is not, as you can tell, is not highly variegated. As I said, the other strand of the other strand, the other skein that I had in the bag with it is also not highly variegated and is, to me, noticeably lighter than this one. So it could be just that I've got the two skeins that are weird. So like I say, now I'm really worried as to what the next ones come out like, but I'm still gonna wait till my LNS gets some cocoa bean in stock and I can have a look at it and then I'll make some decisions from there. But I'm at least feeling better that I think I've got something that will work and not look too, too terribly different, but nothing is gonna happen on this until I get some cocoa bean. So when that happens is anybody's guess, hence why I'm also secretly going, maybe I'm going to start another project. Now it's the 17th. I still go, you've got practically half a month left. So I could make some decent progress on another project and I could still be on track because I only started this towards the end of August. Um, I've been stymied for over a week now. So over the last two months, I've been able to get, you know, uh, six months of the temperature tree accomplished, which means you know, even if I'm stymied until, you know, at some point in November, you know, I'm still going to be on a decent path to getting it. So the plan is not actually to have it actually accomplished in December. Well, you'll see why that is several months down the road. But anyway, it's going to be, I'm hoping to have it close to a finish by the end of the year, but I don't expect that it's going to be finished by the end of this year. So close is, is as far as I'm targeting. It, I'm not expecting it to be done by the end of the year. Um, but worst case scenario, let's get some cocoa bean in. Let's see how it looks. And then I'll make some decisions between the cocoa bean and the anchor thread. But at least I go, I've got a, I now have a fallback position, which I didn't as of last week. Okay, so that's, I have to figure out how to juggle this. Okay, so there were a couple of questions about the temperature tree and comments, questions. So one of the questions, somebody very specifically said, what is your temperature range that you're using in Celsius for your temperature tree? So the range, so I've got 24 colors that I'm using in my range. And um, so at the bottom of the range, I have a color that is for minus 30 degrees Celsius and anything colder than that. And then the top of my range is a color that covers anything that is plus 36 degrees Celsius and anything higher than that. So again, that top color um, we've got it sort of starting to appear here. There's going to be more of that color once we get into July because again, as I said, this is this is a year where we've experienced really ex the most extreme temperatures that I've experienced in the city where I live during my lifetime. So that's my temperature range. So minus there, there are colors, 24 categories. The colors sort of are the gradations between minus 30 degrees Celsius and plus 36 degrees Celsius. Again, as you go past those numbers, it's just minus 30, 31, 32, 37, which I hope we never get to, are all going to be the same color. Again, I'm hoping not to, <laughs> not, not to experience those. Although this week on the weather, they're like, man, it's according to the weather forecasters, this is going to be a really cold winter. Who knows? Who knows what this, and again, so when you come down here, right, so October, November, December are going to be down in the same range. So I'm expecting that my tree is going to be quite, in my head, I feel like it's going to be fairly balanced in terms of the color ranges that are going on it. And the other comment I'm going to make about that is I had a friend of mine who she's usually been chuckling along in the background saying, I'm really glad that you're enjoying your tree, but you know, okay, fine. That's good. Good for you. She's, she's come around. She made a comment this week. She's like, 
I'm actually really starting to like your your temperature tree. <laughs> And for those of you, for some reason, I love stitching it. So I have really missed working on this piece this week. I've got to solve the cocoa bean problem and then we'll see what happens. Um, the other question that I had on that one, so someone had made the comment that they weren't sure that adding the grid would look okay, given sort of how, how this tree looks. And again, so Rachel Q left me a really great comment. She said, Hey Judy, don't forget there is a Facebook group. Go in there and you'll see some examples. I haven't done that yet. It's on my things to do list. Um, somebody did make a comment that they thought it would be interesting if I did a leaf at the bottom. So like sort of most of the suggestions and even in my head I was kind of like just sort of doing like sort of like a temperature thing where it's just kind of a square with a number underneath it to show the gradations as you go along. Somebody made the comment about using a leaf in each of the colors at the bottom. Now, if I made them and I look like they were flat around the ground, maybe, haven't decided. Again, I've got to spend the time, I've got to go into the Facebook group, I've got to look at examples that, of what people have already done. Again, those decisions don't have to be made right now. There are things that I'm pondering. I do think I need to put something on here. Uh, like, there were a couple comments about people who put it on the back, um, which again, all well and good. I think I want mine on the piece, but again, I've got to go into the Facebook group. I've got to look at some of the examples. I'm, I'm debating. The leaf, the making them be leaf shaped has got me thinking where it's like, if I made them leaf shaped and I had them look like they were kind of maybe lying on the, I don't know, That's that's got me thinking. Now I'd have to pick a leaf and decide what that shape was going to be. Well, see, even here I'm going like, why? Why would you have to do that? I could make each of the leaves a different shape because there are different versions of the leaves on the tree. So still working on that. I still am leaning towards I need to put something on here. Haven't quite decided what, but check back later. So there, that, <laughs> that covers the temperature tree because that's, I was going to say nothing got accomplished. No stitching got accomplished. I at least have a fallback position. I am really getting really worried about the cocoa bean and the levels of variegation, so I've got to stay tuned. We'll see what happens on that one. All right, so then we have my Halloween piece. So from Cottage Garden Samplings, Halloween Sampler is what it's technically called. In my head, I always call it Halloween Sampler 1 because there is a Halloween Sampler 2. And here's where I got to this week hardly not nearly as much stitching as I wanted so I got all of my first letters so the A the D and the H which were all done with a toile and again in case you're wondering why it looks as odd as it does here's how I go about it when you saw it last time you saw that I was missing these first letters and that's because I like to pull off um, from my skein the six strands and then fully utilize them so I fully utilized all of the things and these were my goals to get all of these done. So those had to get accomplished and then I finished them up by doing, you know, other first letters until I ran out of the six strands, right? So I fully, I pull off a length and I fully utilize that. And then I come in and I start working on these, um, the letters that are in regular DMC 823 and pull off a strand. Now, technically, if I was keeping on pace with where I was before, I should have had all of this finished and actually all of this bottom row. So as you can tell, I am way behind. For some reason, I didn't seem to get a lot of stitching in this week. I don't know what happened. Life, I guess. You know, was out, was out with a friend, blah, 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 Thanksgiving dinner, who knows what happened. A lot less. So I feel like I've got to catch up. But... Um, Again, more stash acquisitions sprinkled in here. So I was successful in that I did go out and remember I had talked about last week that um, for the moon, which again, still really hard to see on here. Anyway, trust me, there's a moon up here above Abracadabra and this star, um, I wanted to use A12. And so again, 
this is the regular, this is the 972, which is the regular DMC, which is called for is the equivalent to the Gentle Arts or Weeks. What am I using here? Gentle Arts. <laughs> Sorry. What am I using again? I just pull them out of the bag. And quite frankly, I haven't used any of them because all I've been doing is DMC. Uh, so I've got the 972. I did go out and get the 972 in the, in the A12 because I do want the um, moon and the star to have some sparkle. So again, they look a little bit different in terms of color. Um, and again, I'm just wondering if that has to do with, because this has uh, the metallic filament in it. Check back next week. We'll see how it looks. Because my plan is, even though I should be working on these letters and getting them all filled in, I'm going to have to roll up. So the answer is I, my number one goal now that I've actually got this, and quite frankly, I only managed to get the A12 in uh, on Saturday. So... I am going to come in and I'm going to do the star and the bats, right? So I want to make sure that I've actually got the top part finished up. And then coming down here to where uh, the ghost and the bone is, I am going to use, so I do have the glow in the dark DMC. And so for anybody who doesn't know what that is, it's DMC E940. Um, they have a couple of colors. They have this, they have a, like a tangerine color, and they have like a lime green color that are all glow in the dark. So I have the white, which will glow in the dark. I tested it out this week. So I actually brought it down and had it sitting under the light. And then of course, when I turned the light off in the evening, I was sat there and went, oh look, it's glowing. So it does glow in the dark. I've tested that out. Um, it's interesting, I was watching somebody else this week and they were talking about that Rainbow Gallery has a silk lame that is also glow in the dark. So I'm debating about, I'm leaning towards this because I don't think that they should be sparkly glow in the dark, but check back next week and see if I've done anything about that. Um, so I need I need to sort of have a look at that, read up on it, etc., etc. But I've tested this out and this is ready to go. Um, and again, I think I'm going to use it for both um, the bone, uh, the bone here, and the ghost. I was going to say goblin. I'm like, that's not a goblin. I know it says goblin, but it's not actually a goblin. Um, now, when I come down here and I do the tricolored candy corn, I'm just going to use regular. Um, white on that or technically I think what I've actually got in the bag for it is the called for color which is gassed picket fence. Um, so I have my glow in the dark ready to go. I have my A12 972 ready to go and that was one of the questions uh, Rachel asked that and said how did I find working with the A12? And the answer is I'm totally fine working with the A12. I go it's a little it feels a little fuzzier than when you're working with um, just regular DMC, but with my experience of having used crinic blending filaments and metallics and all that kind of stuff, I was like, it's not, it's a little bit different. And again, I wouldn't use um, overly long lengths uh, when I was using it. Again, because you do have this twist of two different fibers together. Um, but again, for if I used one of my standard lengths that I use, I had no problems. Um, you know, I do will say that occasionally I've got a couple of stitches where I feel like for some reason they ended up not having as much sparkle as other, but I kind of went in this context, I'm okay with that. Um, and again, part of the reason why I'm using the A12 as opposed to trying to find a petite treasure braid or a crinic metallic and making it very metallic is when you're using, um, this is why I'm turning it around so I can look at it, it's like when you're, when you're looking at it in real life, they're really, it's a hint of metallic as opposed to being metallic, right? So if you think back to the never ending nativity, like the crinics that it, that are used in those make it very very sparkly. They're very very metallic. It's very noticeable. Um, 
And in this one, while there is sparkle there, it's not quite so, it's not as glittery as the other options would be. And I like that version for this. And again, part of it for me is, you know, if I were trying to convert to a petite treasure braid or a silk lame or Krynik or any of those options, you know, you'd have to then go out and and see how closely you could match it. The beautiful thing about the this particular color that I'm choosing to use is that this navy 823 is both in a toile and in the regular DMC. So as of right now, I want to say that there's 35 colors of a toile. Um, right, so if I'd chosen, you know, if I'd chosen like a royal blue, there may not have been the equivalent and like at that point, that would have probably sent me off into Rainbow Gallery or Krynik Land looking for an option. But this particular navy is, there were, it was both in the regular line as well as the A12, which is actually quite frankly why I, I particularly chose that. So yeah, so the A12 is fine. No issues for me. It's certainly, um, I would certainly rather use A12 than kind of blending a filament combined with, you know, a, a regular strand of DMC or two strands of blending filament, which I've done a lot of this year. Um, you know, when I get to the Krynik number four braids, I usually find those are okay to use. It's really the blending filament is the thing that sort of sends me over the edge. So that part's worked out well for me. Again, um, so again, because I was in the stash, so this came out of the stash because I already had this. Um, I already had the 310 um, in a 12. So using this for the bats, this for the bone and the ghost. I still haven't made a decision about my glorious raven crow. Don't know what my blackbird is down here. Um, same thing. So while I was roaming, trying to find the uh, cocoa bean, I was also looking for uh, Gentle Arts Raven, which nobody has, quite quite frankly. <laughs> I even checked a couple of sites down in the U.S. Not that it would have arrived anytime soon and probably not that I would have been willing to buy it from the U.S. because usually the shipping for a couple of skates would make it ridiculous. But, you know, as usual, Gentle Arts is, is um, right now nobody has Raven. So that's just how it goes. So... Do that, do the broom. So again, so my goal is really to get everything down, all of these extra bits down to here, uh, knocked off this week, except for the bird. I need to catch up on my words. Check back next week and see how well I do about, because uh, technically, like I should be up to which if I was doing one a day. So I'm probably going to fall behind. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, so... Some progress, but not nearly as much as I was expecting. A little disappointed that this is not filled in. So today is the day where I need to get my butt in gear and get a bunch of stuff accomplished. Okay, <laughs> uh, I will also say uh, we do have a mu municipal election. So if you weren't doing the early voting, uh, here where I am, tomorrow is your voting day. Uh, make sure you've actually checked up on all of the things that you're voting on because we have we have not just our mayor and our city councilors, we have school board trustees, um, our nominations for the Alberta Provincial Senate are being part of this election. Federal government is not obligated to use those, but never mind that, that's a whole other kettle of fish. And we've got a number of plebiscite questions. So for those of you who have not yet voted, um, read up. I certainly know when I was uh, getting ready to do my voting and on the early voting, um, I, I have to tell you, it's a really good thing that I looked up what I was voting for. <laughs> like I knew about the plebiscite questions. I knew about the other ones. I didn't realize of what, that the senators were on there. Um, so then I had to go and do my research. So um, if you just Google um, your municipality and your election, you should be able to get it. So I looked all of that up, did all my research. Uh, if you haven't taken ad advantage of the early advanced voting polls, um, tomorrow is your day, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Check where you're supposed to be going. Make sure you've got your identification and all that stuff. 
vote, 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 voting's important. I've been raised in a voting is important. Make sure that your opinion is heard. Okay, so with that, um, okay, let's talk about some, some of the other stash acquisitions. It's not horrendously bad, like I've, I've been dribbling and drabbling them out. Uh, picked up a couple of um, Mill Hill beads. So these are Mill Hill 42010. Again, just as I was working through some of the stuff that I've got in my, in my plans, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, there was something that I was looking at, and for some reason I had it in my head that it needed one one container of these beads and it turns out it needs three. So I had to pick up a couple more. Um, while I was doing Anchor Land, um, and again, so this ties in with a project in the plan, I do have a chart. It actually calls for Anchor 887. So I picked that up. Again, there is a DMC conversion in there, but I had a moment where I was like, let's just go with the called for color on that one. So I picked up two skeins of that. Um, you know, because I'm ridiculous. Um, I did pick up a small piece of uh, fabric, um, again, because they had it available. This is 32 count mint Lugana from Picture This Plus. So I only picked up a wide eighth. So normally I've said before that when I'm picking up fabric, I tend to buy it in a wide quarter because then I go, you can generally fit a really decent sized project or a couple of small ones on it. Um, I only picked up a wide eighth. Why? Because that's all they had. Yep. Um, again, little, little bit of commentary on Picture This Plus. They're really struggling these days, um, according to what I'm hearing. So again, Full caveat, no one from Picture This Plus ever reaches out to me to discuss their situation with me, nor should they. <laughs> so again, this is just rumblings that I'm hearing um, from a variety of sources. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they are struggling getting the base fabric to dye. So again, so I don't know what the cause of it is. So I don't know whether it's because the mills so i think they're getting their product from germany i think it's all zweigart based so i don't know whether it's the mills over there are struggling to getting it all produced don't know don't know what that is i haven't checked into it spent no time on that um so i don't know whether it's the mills or we all know that uh, shipping is turning into a really big problem globally like you can't turn around these days without seeing somebody talking about supply chains and delays and the shipping situation and in the ports and the harbors and how many containers are out there and um, so <laughs> cautionary warning note for all of you uh, work on your Christmas shopping early uh, <laughs> this ties into it was actually a topic of discussion at uh, Thanksgiving because my my mother is like, you all are, you're too hard to shop for. So I need a list to work from. And she's like, I need your list and I need your list now. And she's really right. She does need a list. So I'm working on that. I haven't produced it yet, but I'm working on it. Um, so again, just cautionary note, if you're a last minute shopper, this is maybe not going to be the best year to, uh, to do that. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, so I only got a white eighth because that's what they had. Again, do I have a specific plan for it? No, but they had it in stock and I went get it while it's available. Again, you'll hopefully by the time that I come up with something to do with it, maybe the supply chain will be better. So I also picked up uh, some of this uh, DMC Caloris. I just wanted to make sure it was Caloris. A um, couple of skeins. Okay, a couple of skeins, it's three. And again, so this ties into something I saw. Wow, that lighting's, that's not bad. Uh, ties into something that I saw in the Facebook group. So those things that I ordered from Europe, which have not yet have arrived, and I'm not expecting them for probably several more weeks. Um, but there was um, a couple of examples, and I had a moment. And so again, since I was shopping, and I was picking up and... Um, could see what some of these options were. 
Uh, so I picked up some Caloris. In these particular these particular ways again it's going to be really hard to make any sense of it until you understand what it's for but do i think these are exactly going to be used for that no but they're certainly giving me something to think about and i always enjoy having things to think about as i'm contemplating other things uh, the other thing that i picked up um picked up two skeins of uh classic color works bell swath I'm pretty sure I know how these are going to get used. This is really, and again, so I was looking at, um, you know, I've got a number of red silks in my stash. Um, so I was looking at some of the options. These are the two that, that came home. Okay. Now let's talk about free charts. So as I said before, uh, some of these you're going to be seeing them again for like the third time this month and you're going to see them twice more after this because that's how many Sundays there are in October. Um, but again, so this is from Stone Street Stitchworks. This is the Francis Sweet Love 1827 free. And I'm still going to quote Michelle from Mama Loves You GB on Floss Tube. Download it while it's free because at some point you're going to need something from one of these alphabets. You may not ever want to stitch it like this, but at some point you're going to need the alphabet. Okay, two, I have not updated my picture, but I will say that this morning I did go and I uh, downloaded the additional squares that have, come, that have come out. So I have now downloaded all of the squares to 17 um, on this one. So this is the Pine Needles Halloween Sal, where they're producing one of these small squares every day. Um, this is only available for free until end of day, October 31st, which means October 31st, you really do need to be on your game because that last square that they're going to be producing is only going to be available that one day. So it's easy for me because I always spend quality time on the computer on Sundays because of floss tube. So I know that I will get mine, but for those of you who aren't necessarily doing things on the 31st and are trying to get this download, don't forget to make sure that you go on the 31st and download that last or get caught up because after that, again, you will be able to get this chart, but it will be a paid chart. Free is better than paid. Anyway. All right. New charts this week. Um, so this is from the Twin Peak Primitives. So they put out a Halloween free chart. This is available from the Twin Peak Primitives website directly. Um, so I will put the link to this below. I decided for today that there should be two. So this is from Owl Forest Embroidery. I, oh yeah, there it is. Pumpkin Color Autumn. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Sometimes I go like, it's only in Russian, but no. Pumpkin Color Autumn is what this one is called. Again, I will put a link to where you can get this off the Owl Forest Embroidery website. Again, this is a free chart. So if you're someone who likes the autumn colors, uh, squirrels and pumpkins and things like that, um, this is available. Um, and again, do you have to do all of this? No, you could actually just do the parts that you like. You could just do, you know, the house plus pumpkins and vines or something, right? So it's absolutely up to you um, how you, you know, what elements of this particular design that you're looking at. So that one is also available for free. So in the free chart section in the notes below, there will be four links this week. Now, I've I've already planned out the rest of the month for, for free charts, so there are going to be more free charts every week that are all, as far as I'm concerned, October themed. Um, so we'll just keep adding on to that until we get to October 31st. So yes, on October 31st, which is Halloween, Halloween day here in Canada as well as in the US, um, I will be here on Floss Tube and we'll be doing all of the free charts in review. Um, to that point in time. November, that's a whole other kettle of fish. All right, and with that, let's get to the topic. So today's uh, video is called Let's Talk Short and Sweet. Why? Because I don't have a really great topic for this week. <laughs> 
I've been thinking about it all week and I usually come up with these things and it's like I have I have a list of of topics uh, saved in a spreadsheet for you know days like today where I go like you just don't have anything great to talk about but I looked through that list and I went I don't want to do any of those because uh, usually one of my fallbacks is always do some stash diving show some little known designers that I have in my stash and I have a bunch of those but I just didn't feel like it today so today this is Amy <laughs> probably going to be one of my shorter videos so for Joanne Jones I'm really sorry that you're unhappy but I am going to send you to someone else who's got a really really long video so that's the consolation prize so I don't really have a good topic for this week other than I'm going to talk a little bit about plans and plans for 2022 and um, rotation a little bit about rotations again because that's been coming up in some of the floss tubes that I've been watching and see, there goes the light again. It's changing yet again. <laughs> now the sun is definitively, I feel like, behind some stuff. Anyway, um, so I am working on my plan for 2022. Um, I've been doing some stuff this week, and I've been, you know, again, as I've been sort of going through some of the stash for a variety of reasons and watching other people and looking at some things, I'm revisiting some of the plan again my first four months I think are all pretty much still intact uh, they're keeping keeping where they're going but I do feel like there's going to be some changes sort of in the back half of 2022 about how that's going to come along so I'm working on coming up with that plan rotations you know I've always been struggling and I'm looking at new rotations so it's been a very interesting experience this week for me who's generally tended to be a monogamous stitcher having a week where I only had one thing to stitch on because the temperature tree I was stymied because I couldn't find you know cocoa bean anywhere to sort of say I didn't enjoy it I didn't enjoy only having the one so I don't know if that also played into why I wasn't as productive on the other one is because I didn't have the two to balance each other out so that's been an interesting experience for me this week and I've been watching a couple of other floss tubers where they're you know again so everybody's sort of getting into the planning for 2022 mode and what they're doing and things that they're planning on changing and so some of the people where I've been looking at their rotations and going like you should maybe try that out it's been interesting me for me watching them saying I think I'm going to change my rotation in 2022 check back later see what I decide and I'm going to say like, well that's really funny because I'm, I'm maybe planning on adopting a little bit of yours so Anyway, we'll see, you know, hence the thing where I'm going like, if I don't come up with cocoa bean re within a reasonable amount of time, I really am thinking about starting yet another project because I don't, right now, I'm not enjoying only having one. Now, I, in my head, I already know what that other one is going to be. I already know what that's going to be. I already know. So am I going to follow the, pl the, the pattern exactly? Of course not. I already have changes and again this hap has to do exactly with I've seen what other people have done with this chart and I like their options better than the original charted ones so that's one of the options so we'll see if I can't find cocoa bean reasonably and I'm not guaranteed that that's going to happen anytime soon so there might be another new start next week um, and again, I'm looking at how I'm going to handle doing a rotation in 2022, which is going to be different from how this year looked. So my, my entire plan on how I'm basing things, working things out from a calendar perspective for 2022 is different than what I did this year. Because we all like change, right? Um, so the, the floss tuber that I watched this week that I'm going to highly encourage any of you who have not watched her before. Now she hasn't done a video in quite some time, um, but she came out and she put one out. I want to say it was this week because certainly this is the week I watched it and it's a long one. So it's a two hour long video. Don't forget, you don't always have to watch these things in one go. You can watch them in multiple goes, etc., etc. Um, but I really enjoyed watching it. I've been dying for her to put out a, a floss tube. I've been waiting to get an update on her big project for 2022. And so it's Jen Lee from Quirks and Stitches fame. She's on both Instagram and on floss tube. I will put a link to the floss tube down below where she talks about, she had a couple of things. She had, she has historically had a very long list of whips like 
you know, a hundred or so. And so her goal um, since sort of the summer of 2020 was to get under 40 whips by 2022 because she's turning 40 in 2022. That was going to allow her to take, undertake this big extravaganza. Her plan is to start 222 new projects in 2022. So she'll explain more in her video. It's, here's the simple recap. She's turning 40 in 2022 and her birthday is February 22nd. So 222, 2022 a lot of twos in there. She'll explain how she got to the 222. So 222 is a plan. And I've been, she's been throwing things on Instagram, sort of, you know, spreadsheets and charts and all this kind of stuff, which is someone I enjoy spreadsheets as well. I've been going like, don't just show me like this, the layout of all the spreadsheets you're working on. I need more details. What are you doing? Now, I'm not starting 222 projects. I think it's a really great idea for her. It appeals to her. It's her jam. I think that's fantastic. I want to watch all of this come together. I don't want to, I, I'm not planning 222, 222 projects, certainly not 222 new starts for me. That's not what I'm going to want to do. Anyway, so it's a really fantastic, uh, a really fantastic video. I loved watching it. So she worked through all of the whips that she has completed because she is now officially under 40 whips. So she's achieved her goal of under 40 by 40. Um, she has also shown all of, so she's shown all of those whips that she's finished, which is a lot. She also shows all of the current whips that she's working on and will be working on. Can Through the end of the year, she's expecting a few more uh, finishes as well as into 2022. And then she spends some time working through her process about how she came up with the 222, how she's sort of approached it from a planning perspective. So now if you're one of those people where you go like, I just like to do whatever I want, whenever I want, and all of you people who do your big plans and all that kind of stuff, that's not for me. That may, so that part may not appeal to you, but if not, go watch like all the finishes and the whips because that's fantastic. Maybe the planning stuff is not for you, but for someone like me, I loved all that stuff. I loved watching it. I loved hearing what she's doing again. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to be emulating her. I'm not going to be replicating her. I'm certainly going to be cheering her on and I can't wait to see all of the projects that she's chosen because it's a large number of designers she's working with. She's got everything. She's got a big plan. <laughs> I'm going, I just want like, I want like the 12 month calendars and the names of which ones you're going to be working on. Anyway, we'll see what she does uh, with that. So I, again, I will put a link directly to her video below. I think it's a fantastic video. That's my, my floss tube recommendation for this week. Um, Cause really I don't have anything else to talk about this week. I know it's, again, I kept looking at all of the options of things that I could pull out of stash to talk about and I went, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> anyway. So check back next week because who knows what I will have come up with for next week's topic because I'm now feeling the pressure that I really do need to have a very specific topic to talk about because this week's was not. Anyway, with that, that's all I've got to talk about this week. Um, so I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's staying healthy. I hope you found to do some some time to do some stitching and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care, guys.